Hi and happy Tuesday. Hang on, I don't think, oh no I am, I'm just checking that I wasn't on mute. <laughs> happy Tuesday and welcome to another of our fortnightly webinars. I'm Jo Henderson and you can find me here every two weeks talking to our residents and guest experts all about LinkedIn strategy and how DuckSoup helps us to achieve it. Today I'm joined not only by our head of sales Scott Wright who is possibly looming, there he is in the background. Hi. Hello, also, everybody. Excited to be here. <laughs> also, our guest for today, Johannes Huch, founder and CEO of Promonio, who is here to share his success story, which saw him generate 175,000 in four months with just one LinkedIn campaign. Before I hand over to Johannes, just let just to let you know, he'll be taking part in our Q&A at the end of the session. So if you have any questions, please do add them into the question box on the GoToWebinar dashboard, which should be on the side of your screen. I'll also be sharing any links that are referred to in the chat box. So keep a lookout on there as well. If you're new to DuckSoup, and I know a lot of you with us today are, then please take advantage of our free trial. You get access to all of the features we'll be covering today, and I'll pop the link in the chat once I've handed over to Johannes. You'll be sent the recording later today, which will give you a head start on everyone else when it comes to implementing any of the tips and tricks that you get from today's session. So let's get on with it. Johannes, welcome to the stage and thank you for joining us. Please take it away. Yeah, great. Thank you. Thanks uh, for having me here. Super excited. I've been a very enthusiastic user of DuckSoup for six, five, six years. And so this is really uh, just quite an honor. So I appreciate uh, you guys letting me do this. Great to have you here. Great. All right. So should I get into the presentation? Get into your thing and I'll disappear off the screen for now. Okay. All right. Wonderful. Well, a little bit about myself. Um, I assume you can see my screen. Um, the, we can, yes. Uh, oops. Here we go. Uh, my background, uh, CMO for 10, 12 years, COO. Very analytical background, uh, both by original training and engineer, but then later on did various other uh, engagements to continue the affliction. Uh, and my flavor to marketing has been decidedly analytic. And lately the market is really coming my way. And so this is super exciting. And one of the things we'll talk about today is to make sure that you have some ideas for how to make what you do in demand generation and or marketing uh, more accountable. And uh, we'll walk you through all of that. Uh, with that said, so we'll focus on uh, three things. And uh, a key piece to reaching out to prospects is really having a tight, tightly defined target definition. You know, who's my ideal customer? Who do I go after? And we'll walk through both some general lessons as well as later on some technology and some apps that we can use to actually tighten our ICP definition. Uh, one of the things that has changed in the last two or three years, really since COVID, is uh, people have gotten a lot more jaded. People are not as willing to engage a lengthy pitch. People certainly are not willing anymore to be just straight up sold to. You know, a lot of, for example, if you go to your LinkedIn profile, you'll see a lot of, hey, you know, click the link, please, and get on my Calendly. Uh, you know, then the question is, why would I do that? And really, the whole process starts with getting very, very tight on who am I selling to and why would they be buying from us? How do we tune the messaging for them? So we'll walk through that a little bit of theory, but also then practical examples for how do you actually implement that with a technology a strategy that complements LinkedIn and DuckSoup very nicely. The other piece, and I know a lot of you are uh, marketing to or for on behalf of other companies and uh, increasingly nowadays they want to know, well, what have you done for me lately? And uh, one of the things we'll talk about then is really how do you actually a model what you're going to do to them for them, but then also monitor and be more accountable so that you can say, well, this is what we've done, or this is what we're planning, and this is what we've done. So we'll walk through a little bit of accountability. And last but not least, we'll actually go through a fair amount of technical detail on how do you actually implement these tools and how do you, you know, go from a crawl to a walk to a run strategy. The run strategy is fairly sophisticated, and hopefully, you know, it'll addressing all three levels will hopefully 
give you a sense of uh, where we can take things by using a tool like uh, DuckSoup, which is really one of the few tools that is working, especially in B2B marketing and in the case that I'm going through selling to the C-suite. Those people are very difficult to get a hold of and you really have to go through a fair amount of effort to tune your messaging and tune your uh, targeting to them. And so we'll walk you through all of that. So with that said, let me dive in. Uh, we're going to switch back and forth between this presentation and I also have actually all of these apps open. So there is a, a live aspect to it. And uh, if things don't work, we have some slides as a backup. Uh, so one way or the other will give you a good idea for how these things work, but you'll see me switching context here and there. One other little caveat, I've actually come down with a cold and you can maybe hear that in my voice. So uh, if I'm not understandable, uh, please let me know. All right, let's dive right into it. So in terms of the messaging, uh, there's really three things that have changed in the last two years, or the, the targeting and the messaging in the last two or three years. Uh, one is uh, people just, you know, you really have to understand in a very deep detail, who am I targeting to? Like in my own case, for example, when I started out my company and we do growth modeling and we make uh, growth modeling more predictive, uh, we initially thought, well, we, you know, we're going to sell to CFOs. Uh, turns out our dominant buyer is a CRO that is getting ready for a board meeting and doesn't have a good story to tell them on how they grow. One subflavor to that is it's a CRO that just took over marketing and they don't really know what to do with. Uh, that's been happening quite a bit lately, uh, you know, not without uh, some regret on my part, but marketing to some extent has lost the political fights uh, around, you know, who's generating pipeline in the current environment that's very budget conscious and it's very accountability conscious. And so getting this tightly defined, you know, who is, who are the, the target, the advertisers, the people that you want to go after um, is a key uh, aspect. And, you know, we'll walk you through some processes and some technologies that we use to basically uh, get that tight. The other piece is, you know, being highly differentiated. Uh, in our case, uh, our differentiation is that we don't require prior data. Uh, you know, that's the major differentiator vis-a-vis -vis analytics apps. And, uh, you know, a lot of people don't have that really worked out. I work a fair amount with uh, fractional CMOs right now who, when they were in their prior job, you know, their job was to get the company differentiated. When I go to them and say, well, what is, you know, what's your differentiation? They go, well, I'm a fractional CMO. <laughs> Well, you know, there's 5,000 of those. Uh, how do you actually make yourself unique and different? And then last but not least, and this is an interesting uh, cultural trend, again, that I think has happened over the last few years, accelerated by COVID. And apps like TikTok, you know, simplify that. You know, you uh, signify that. You really need to get connected to people in the first 20 seconds. And uh, if we don't have, you know, why them, why us, which are the left two graphics tight, and then express all that in a way that they find emotionally and uh, viscerally captivating, you don't get the next 30 seconds. And the next 30 seconds buys you the three minutes, and the three minutes buys you then their willingness to maybe take a meeting. But it all starts with having a clear value prop, but also expressed in an emotionally compelling way. Again, easy said, harder to do. Uh, as we go on, I'll give you some ideas for what this might look like. But think of these three uh, elements as part of kind of the core part to make sure that ICPs and messaging gets dialed in. Just because we're running LinkedIn campaigns using a tool like DuckSoup doesn't mean we're actually going to connect. So this is really more talking about how do we connect. Here, a little more the same story, but basically, written down in a few bullet points. Uh, one of the things, for example, that people don't understand quite often is the customer journey, uh, especially if you implement a tool like DuckSoup, where the handoff might go from marketing, who runs the tool, to sales, who then does the follow or SDRs who do the follow-up calls, who pass it on to the customer. So as the customer has gone through that journey, they may have hit on three departments. Uh, those three departments might not talk to each other. 
And so now suddenly you have these breaks in the customer journey. So it's really important to go through, you know, the 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 customer journey, the 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 trajectory that you're taking them through from initial raw lead all the way through close one, but through the the customer's perspective. You know, how does it look like to them? They go to my website, they fill out a link, you know, they get an email from us, they get a LinkedIn invite from us, what have you. You know, what does that all look like? Look like? And quite often it ends up being very complicated, ends up being much longer than it needs to be. And the more steps are in that journey, the higher the likelihood that there's a drop off. And so that's a key piece. The other piece is just, you know, offer them something that's, you know, what's in it for them. And uh, quite often, again, and we'll see it later on when we look at LinkedIn, there's all these invites. I'm a blah, 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 blah. And here's my Calendly link. And I'd like to, you know, we would have mutual benefit. <laughs> I'm like, well, uh, I understand there's a benefit to you, but you haven't quite explained to me yet why there's a benefit to me. So get that tight. And then also, again, map it into the overall messaging, what's in it for me, especially with executives. There's always two tracks. There is the larger corporate goals. We help you accelerate time to market. We help you lower your cost. We help you increase your customer satisfaction. That's great. Most people... They have that as a goal up here, but really the deep down goal is how does it further my career and how is it going to deal with my own anxieties? And like in my example, when I walked you through the CRO example, you know, their big worry is not about getting their sales costs down. Their big worry is to stay employed after the next board meeting. And so how do, I, how do you get them through the next board meeting? That's his or her core anxiety. It's important to understand that so that you can uh, connect with that. And then also it's okay to be mildly provocative, you know, thought provoking. Uh, think through the problem that they might be having. And we're gonna walk you through a fair amount of technology at the end here that, where you can really start homing in on what is that person working on and you know, what are the concerns that they might be having that I can connect with and I can communicate it in a way with them that's very uh, emotionally captivating and where they go, oh, I hadn't thought of that, you know, tell me more and you, you go from there. Anyway, so that's a little bit of theory to be followed in the second part of the presentation with more practical examples of technologies and how to do that. But I've seen this over and over and over right now uh, when people have their ICP and their messaging dialed in, their conversion rates and the click-through rates literally go up two and three X. So this might sound like a little bit of MBA theory, but it really is probably the most important part of the presentation because most people barrel through this exercise and then wonder why their campaigns aren't working. Well, the fundamental homework hasn't been done. Who's my customer and why would they want to buy from me? Let's shift gears a little bit. Uh, we're going to talk about accountability and what you see building up here is a different approach that we are advocating. Um, most companies go out and they collect a whole ton of data and they then try to synthesize that data into some composite picture of what their funnel looks like. What we do with our approach is we do it the other way around. We set goals and we say finance, customer service, sales, marketing has these goals. We align and integrate them and I'll show you what this looks like. And then we actually start monitoring how do those goals, are those goals being achieved on a fairly regular basis? for example, weekly or monthly. And the way this looks like is, you know, we basically do a growth simulation. We'll say you want to grow to 1 million, 5 million, 10 million, 400,000, whatever the number is. In order for you to hit that goal, customer success needs to do these activities. Sales needs to make 500 calls a day and, you know, 30 demos a week, whatever the number ends up being. And I'll show you some examples. And then marketing has to generate X amount of leads, both inbound and outbound. Let's make sure they all hang together so that the, you know, if sales expects 50 leads out of marketing and marketing's budget only supports 20 leads coming out of marketing, you have a mismatch. And uh, conversely, then if marketing says, I need a million and a half budget, but finance only allocates six or 700,000 to them, again, you have a problem. So that's one of the things that we do with our tool. We walk people through the alignment of these goals. But the part that ends up being the advantage of doing it this way is you don't get bogged down in trying to implement a whole bunch of analytics apps 
in your tech stack that are now trying to make sense. Oh, I have this many clicks on this app and I have this many likes on that app and I have this many calls made on this app and now how does that all synthesize together so that I can say, okay, you're on track on making your two or three million dollars of revenue, whatever the goal ends up being. And so what we uh, do there is we really make sure that people have a simple user experience on how to actually both architect their go-to-market funnel as well as then uh, associate goals with it. We make sure that all the goals are mathematically linked to the dollar results. If you make 50 calls, if you send out five, 500 LinkedIn invites, how much you know, money will you make three months later? And you know, what are the intermediate uh, monitors, uh, measures that we can monitor to make sure that we hit that goal? We already talked about aligning sales and marketing pipelines. Quite often, they're not aligned. We talked about, uh, we've already talked about and we'll talk about CAC, customer acquisition cost and valuation alignment, so that the investors say, okay, we want to get your CAC from $8 per lead uh, or $8 uh, uh, you know, yield for a dollar spend, I get $8 in revenue down up to 12, say. And you can do this on a forward looking basis. Uh, most people do this entire system that I'm talking about here using simple spreadsheets. We have a cloud app that does it, but uh, simple spreadsheets for smaller organizations work just as well. But the key is to have these goals, your activity goals up here translated into uh, the corresponding revenue goals and are able to measure those. And we'll show you what this looks like in our own implementation. I'll show you our own pipeline implementation where you can see how we've done that. Uh, let me go on to the next slide. So this is what this would look like. On the right-hand side, you see what's called a sand key. It basically says my revenue goal is X and my sources of revenue are going to be inbound organic, LinkedIn invites, in this particular case, this is an actual customer example, affiliate programs, and then they have some partnerships and so forth uh, where the revenue comes from. You can see here fairly quickly uh, and visually fairly intuitively, you know, my year one revenue on a first touch basis broken down by lead source. Where is my, where are my big chunks? And in this particular case, and again, this is a real uh, example, uh, flow number six was Daksu, you know, LinkedIn invites. And this really breaks down into two parts. It's the initial invite. I send, I contact somebody, invite them to be a first connect. And then the second piece is the um, the first connect nurture. You know, now that I have a first connection, how do I get them interested in talking to me? And this is where all that ICP and messaging stuff that I talked about in the beginning comes in. If we don't have that dialed in, we now don't know how to follow up with a message. and if you're in the habit of sending out, you know, LinkedIn messages after the person has connected with your Calendly link attached, you know, if that works for you, good luck. For most pieces, it does. In most people, it doesn't work. You have to put out the honey and engage people rather than going after them with a fly swatter. And uh, in this, this particular case, back to the, the the planning and the growth architecting piece that I'm talking about. We actually had identified 13 flows for them, you know, 13 areas where their leads are going to come from. And we uh, basically uh, build tight workflows for each of them. We make sure that the respective teams are trained. Is it marketing? Is it the BDRs? Is it partners? Is it sales? And then also have all the metrics in place. I just, I've just shown the one here where in order to hit, get that 1.4 million out of LinkedIn, you know, they needed to send out 90 invites a week to the right uh, target demographic and go forward. And th this is a system that actually, you know, has produced and works. The translation of all of these goals into then the associated KPIs, uh, you see a sample here. You see at the top, the you know, the vertical, the, the columns are all the various lead sources that are being implemented, SEO, form fills, code, emails, and so forth. And then the, on the horizontal axis, you have the early funnel activities. That's the stuff that you're tracking. I need to send 4,000 emails a week. I have to have six leads a week coming out of events and so forth. And then you have some mid-funnel metrics, MQLs and SQLs, and or at the bottom opportunities, which are me measured both in 
number of opportunities as well as pipe, uh, dollar pipeline and also closed one. Sorry, the CW is missing. CW stands for closed one. And so you can see if uh, everything is translated, if I go back again, sorry, if you know you start setting the goals, you translate all of this into um, activity metrics that are correlated with revenue targets using a, an approach like this, uh, and then translate this into weekly or monthly KPIs, you then actually get a, you know, you make a fair amount of progress actually figuring out what works and what doesn't. And the key piece of it is, you know, we have an early warning system that allows us to say what's working, and what's not working. And it also allows you to be more accountable to your customers because you can say, well, in order for us to make 3 million in October, we need to have, you know, 50 emails send out uh, a day and you know 80 email, LinkedIn invites a week and we're actually on track and the conversion rates look like we're on track so we have a pretty high likelihood that we'll hit our October goals. All right uh, let me shift gears so again part one was messaging and ICP a little bit of MBA theory uh, part two was the accountability how to actually track and uh, monitor these things and now I'll take you through uh, a tech stack. Uh, this is a reference tech stack we've implemented on numerous occasions. On the left-hand side, the growth architecting and the revenue framing is the piece that I just talked about where we actually um, are doing this planning. And I'll show you what our app looks like and I'll show you what this looks like implemented in our pipe drive, uh, our own CRM, which is pipe drive. Um, we'll then talk a fair amount about how do I actually engage people so that, you know, let's say I have my ICP tight now, I know who's buying from me. It's, you know, CROs that have uh, a, uh, a board meeting coming up in two weeks and they need to get ready for it. Uh, how do I actually engage them and how do I show them some interesting content where they say, oh, gee, these guys know what they're talking about. And I'll show you two apps, uh, TeamFluence and SparkToro. And uh, those are two apps where that, that we use to engage influencers so that we can both get more traction with people that are in a particular area, active in a particular area, but also we can, you know, uh, for example, get them to comment on our work or we can just simply share an interesting piece of content. Those are the kinds of things that engage a prospect more so than, hey, gee, I'm a marketing consultant and here's my Calendly link. Uh, Crystal Nose is an interesting tool, and uh, uh, Joe, with a little bit of advanced warning, I'll use you at the, as the guinea pig to show how Crystal Nose works. But Crystal Nose is basically a tool that you can use to do a personality assessment, and it makes recommendations how to talk to a person by simply feeding them the LinkedIn profile. And I'll show you what this looks like. Apollo is um, an interesting piece of technology. It's basically Think of it as a combination of Crunchbase, which has a uh, startup database, so you know funding history, funding stage, things like that. Plus, it has a very similar search algorithm or search methodology to LinkedIn Navigator, so you can use it for targeting. But you can do additional targeting beyond what just LinkedIn can do, because you can now say, give me everybody that's in a Series A, or give me everybody that's growing or shrinking. So it's a little extra functionality over and above LinkedIn Navigator, but it does use the LinkedIn technology. And then thirdly, it actually also allows you to then do email. And so we use actually the combination of DuckSoup and Apollo to do omnichannel outreach, where we use Apollo for the email campaigns, where we use uh, DuckSoup for the LinkedIn outreach, and then we we'll obviously have a couple of uh, BDRs that do the live follow-up, uh, and it, it's all integrated, which is a little bit of a Rubik's Cube but it is something that's more effective than just using one of these outreach techniques. Clay.run is a super interesting technology. Uh, I personally love it, but it's a little complex, but we'll show you. Uh, think of it as a spreadsheet where each cell can make API calls and you can actually use it to um, customize messaging at scale. Remember at the very beginning, we talked about targeting ICPs very tightly and the messaging has to be really tight and relevant to them. Clay.run is actually a tool that helps you to do that. And then obviously not last and certainly not least, DuckSoup is a key part of this equation. So this is the, uh, the pieces of the tech stack 
that will walk you through and give you some samples. Um, so I'll leave this presentation now and I'll go into uh, uh, you know the various apps so they can actually see this in action uh, live. So let me get out of this for a second. And uh, hang on, here we go. Uh, and so now, you know, as, as I've indicated, we're going to go through the demo and the samples. Um, the growth planning tool is this is our own tool here. Uh, it's a uh, it runs on Google Sheets, which makes it easy to implement. But it's actually a JavaScript app. We have our own menu. We can you know you can create inputs, outputs. I won't take you through this. Going through this tool alone will uh, take up an entire session. But suffice it to say that it is the tool that allows you to say, okay, I want to make three million, five million, ten million, one million, whatever the number is, and you know build out your lead funnel along. The lines here. This is our own, by the way. I'm we eat our own dog food. This is my own tool, and so you, uh, you, we use this to set this up as a goal. And the way we use that is, let me shift context here. Uh, we go into PipeDrive. This is our own PipeDrive implementation, and uh, what you can see here is the horizontal lines are the goals that came out of the modeling tool. So I basically use PipeDrive and I set these goals. We're just launching our software business. This is basically the side, the software side of the house where we're launching this growth modeling software. You can see, for example, in Q2, we had $48,000 software sale goal per month. And we actually ended up doing 186. And then the goal for Q3 is 121 a month, and then you can see we're actually in the investment process. The goals go quite go up quite a bit to over 700,000 a month uh, for uh, Q4. But we use this as a a way to track: Are we actually hitting our goal on a forward-looking basis? And what the other piece that we can do here is: Let me shift this around. Sorry, it needs to be yearly. And we'll go down, go back to the beginning. Uh, you can see how our history, our own growth history, has actually benefited from this approach. What you can see here is the ratio of red to green is fairly large, meaning we lose more than 50%, or we lost more than 50%. 22 was obviously a difficult year. But then this is when we got serious about implementing all this technology. And you can see, for example, our win rate in Q3, uh, I'm sorry, in 2023 went up quite a bit. Uh, we really dialed in the things I'm talking about, the ICP, the messaging, uh, the way we would take people through the customer journey. And you know, in Q in 2024, it's really starting to benefit. Our win rate is still very high, the ratio of red to or green to red, essentially. We have a pretty large pipeline, and this is just, we're basically already past the 2023 goal just in the first half of the year, and so we're actually having a very good year, and we'll probably have a very really good uh, next couple of years because we're starting to hit the ground, and we have all the messaging and, and the targeting and so forth dialed in, but the, the key message here that I want to convey is we're actually using our own dog food, and we're using the idea of tracking all the metrics and then doing constant week on a weekly or bi-weekly basis comparisons of uh, what works it doesn't. Let me go back to the presentation, uh, what we're going to talk about next. So I talked you through the, the, the growth planning and I showed you these two graphs. Uh, here, let me show you our uh, pipe drive implementation. I'm sorry, our uh, duck soup implementation and basically have two uh, processes here that are running in parallel. What you're seeing here is my own initiative. I have DocSoup installed. My apologies, I'm still on the uh, on the extension. I, I am, I profess to want to switch to the, uh, the cloud app fairly soon because that is super powerful. I just haven't had enough time. But th these are the kinds of conversion rates that I'm getting uh, for my own campaigns. Uh, and this is for the last two or three year average. So I run about, get about a thousand or so 1500 invites a, week, uh, a, a month, a year out, and then I have about a 50% accept rate and a 30% response rate. In the beginning, it used to be a lot lower, and now it's getting to be higher. And the reason is we're getting the messaging and the targeting dialed in, which is, makes a huge difference. I mean, really, if you put that homework into getting that all 
tight, uh, the benefit is, is visible here. The other part to our duct soup implementation strategy. So again, this is what I do on my own. This is when I sort of send out invites and I invite people, but we also use a company called Ampt, A-M-P-E-D. And uh, these guys ha actually have a very powerful implementation. They do a lot of our automated uh, outbound campaigns where we do both invitational campaigns as well as uh, first connect follow-ups. And all of this is run through, um, through Slack. And so you can see here, for example, I have, um, I just got a response back from a guy, Jürgen Weichert, he's a shareholder, and uh, him and I have been corresponding. If I wanted to look at the correspondence, I could click on the conversion history, conversation history, I could skip the message, I can amp it, let me see whether or not that works, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, it's, it's not really compatible with... Uh, uh, go, yeah, I don't think it'll work. By the way, as an aside, the uh, presenting on GoToMeeting and also having all the other extensions open, sometimes these various extensions end up contradicting each other. So as you use these technologies, you might have to turn off an extension and turn the other one back on so that they work properly. It looks like this one doesn't work. But if it would work, it would now have a ChatGPT generated response to this gentleman that I could just print then push a button and it would go out. Or I can simply do this, I click on reply and here, if I were to write something, he would now get a message in LinkedIn, but I've done it all in Slack. And so this is this is our uh, DuckSoup implementation. Again, some of it is my own, I showed you that. And the other piece is the piece that's being managed and run by Amped, and they're running entire campaigns. We tell them, you know, CROs, here are the campaign CMOs, here are the campaign CEOs, here are the campaigns, and they execute those, and then I just interact with them. My entire team is on this. Uh, I interact with them using, uh, using Slack. All right, let's keep going. Uh, the uh, next piece we've talked about, so I've talked to you a little bit about my own duck soup. We've talked about AMP. The next piece is if we, uh, is uh, Apollo. And Apollo we use for two, in two purposes. Uh, one is the, it's a great search function. Again, as I said earlier, it's really, it's Crunchbase plus LinkedIn, plus LinkedIn Navigator plus MailChimp, essentially all in one app. And here I brought up DuckSoup. So if I wanted to actually target DuckSoup as a prospect, I have everything I need. I have the website, I have the LinkedIn profile, I have the Facebook page. I also have a fair amount of data on their people trends, employee trends. I can see the technologies that they're using. This is all the stuff that's being basically being pulled in from uh, the Crunch Base database. And if I want to, I can now add them to a list and I can actually put them on outbound campaigns. These are my various email campaigns. I don't run too many anymore uh, because we, we're pretty much relying on LinkedIn now, but uh, on occasion we do combination campaigns between email and LinkedIn, and then these would be state campaigns uh, that we have. Uh, you know, here's a CEO campaign, here's a CRO campaign that we have staged, and you can see, you get your stats, you can see how many people are opening and so forth. So we use that for A-B testing, for example, where we optimize uh, messaging. That's the Apollo piece. And again, the two pieces that I mentioned, one is the search functionality, other one is the email functionality. Another interesting technology that helps with targeting, and where, as you see me kind of demonstrating these apps, I'm getting tighter and tighter and tighter on figuring out who's my ICP and what are actually, what are they interested in. And this is the, I don't know if you're familiar with LinkedIn ad library. I think I have it open here, yeah. And I just picked, I went on my uh, LinkedIn profile earlier here, and there was a company that was up uh, called Rippling. So, you know, you can see as you go through your, here's Verizon, uh, if you go, with, here's other companies that are advertising. Uh, and you can basically go into the LinkedIn ad library, and I brought up Rippling, and you can see all the LinkedIn ads. Uh, let me see if I, what happens if I put Verizon in. Um, Click on search, see when that comes up. Uh, yeah, I might be using too much memory, so it's not, uh, 
not bring anything up, but basically I we use this to sort of get a sense for how is this company advertising themselves? What are, What is their messaging? So let's say I want to get an executive at Rippling interested. So I look at their ads and I go, well, gee, you're your ad on, you know, the IT layer, uh, leaders 2024 top priorities, we totally agree with that. We've, we've seen trends where it's even higher than that, you know, some such thing. Let's say I sent this person, oh, here we go, it's trying to do, let's see whether or not we get Verizon back. But if I, you know, if I now get the, the uh, ads coming up uh, and I can see what their advertising history is, I now have a little talking piece that I can engage. Oh, here we go, it actually works. So here you can see the, the Verizon ads. Uh, and again, let's say I wanted to contact the Verizon executive. I could talk to them and say, well, gee, I love your Netflix ads. That's awesome. Who came up with that? Or, you know, some come on like this. It's a lot more likely to get a response than if you're just talking about yourself. I'm Johannes. I'm this great marketer. And you want to talk to me. And here's my calendar link. Don't do that. This is much more much more effective way of engaging with people. The other piece is this one, and this is one of my favorite apps. It's something called Teamfluence, and I'll show you what this looks like. Um, it's uh, I, in fact, I, where well, I forgot where I put you here. I think here you are. Yeah, here we go. So uh, Joe and I are connected now on LinkedIn, and you can see here this button. I when it was pink, it was not yet. Uh, she, I was not following her. So as soon as I clicked this button, I started following her on Teamfluence. And the um, here you can see Teamfluence gives me all the people that I'm basically following. Uh, you can see all the folks that I'm interested in. And I use this, again, as another way of engaging with them with something around content that's uh, interesting to them not talking to them about me. So in this particular case, you know, Joe is quite active. She's pushing, uh, she's pumping several of her campaigns and several of her events. I now have a choice. I can either um, dismiss it or I can open the actual original LinkedIn uh, post. I can like it or I can add a comment and then I can go in and say, hey, great campaign. I wish I could make it, uh, you know, see you next week. And I push comment and it will get sent to her via LinkedIn. So she thinks I'm actually engaging with her content on LinkedIn. In reality, I have, you know, my Teamfluence app going. So between my um, my Slack implementation where I get all my direct feeds, my direct responses come in and my Teamfluence, I never actually have to go into LinkedIn. I'm just responding to people around content that are, you know, these are all people that are my ICP, people that I'm following because they are relevant to me either as a thought leader or they're a target, you know, somebody that I want to go after. I now know exactly when and what they're publishing, what they're interested in. If I do the uh, LinkedIn ad research, I can see what the ad does and I can, uh, you know, engage them around content that they find interesting rather than talk about myself. Uh, this is Teamfluence. Uh, we've just walked through Crystal Nose. So let me show you another aspect of Crystal Nose. Uh, this is actually kind of cool. And again, sorry, uh, Joe, I'm going to use you as the guinea pig. Uh, on the right hand side, I already opened up Crystal Nose. And I don't know if you're familiar with this profile. Uh, I'm kind of here. She's an influencer. And it starts giving you ideas for how do I target her, for example, and you can, I can, uh, let's see, yeah, it works. I, it'll give me ideas for how to communicate with her. So it basically goes out, it does a personality assessment on what kind of a personality is Joe vis-a-vis -vis me, and then makes recommendations to me on how do I actually engage with her and how do I talk to her. Uh, I, I personally right now can't see the dialogue because the go to meeting box sits on top of it, so I won't play around with it more. But one of the uh, things you can do also is you can you can go in and say, well, how should I best send her an email? And it actually crafts an email for you that you can send her or a LinkedIn message. And it's it's quite powerful. I use it uh, quite a bit if I want to get some sense of how does a particular person tick. That's uh, uh, Crystal knows. Uh, this last app I won't demonstrate. I talked earlier 
about how these extensions are actually mutually interfering with each other. Right now, I have the Duxub extension, the Apollo extension, the Crystal Nose extension, a whole bunch of other extensions running on my a Chrome browser, and they don't always cooperate. And Shareativity is one of those that's not really compatible. Uh, so I won't turn all the extensions off so just so I can demo the Shareativity. But what Shareativity does is essentially, if I were to open up Joe's profile again, and I click, in fact, I can show it to you here, up here uh, on the right hand side you can see the shareativity uh chrome extension icon if i were to click that it would now open up a new page and it actually presents to me on one page all of joe's social media activity anything that they can find you know x facebook linkedin wherever she's active it gets it to me on one page so again in this idea of how do i connect with somebody and talk to them about topics that they find relevant. Shareativity is a nice little app because it shows me what they're posting and what the activity is. And a lot of times people are not that active and then that in it of itself is telling because then you can say, well, gee, it sounds like you're not all that active in social media. If that's something that you would like to learn, we, uh, we can work with you. Uh, a couple of more items, we're almost done. Uh, SparkToro is an interesting tool and I'll go to it now. Uh, remember we, have this whole idea of uh, using Teamfluence where I'm going after people that are maybe thought leaders in the space so that I can come up with content ideas. You know, I'm, I plagiarize their stuff and or I get them to engage with my content. You know, if a person that has a 50,000 uh, member following engages with my content, then I get a nice little hit and I also get a fair amount of credit credibility. And so SparkToro is a little tool that where you can put in some topics. So let's, for example, put in LinkedIn outreach as a topic because that seems to be something that we all care about. And it's now pulling together all the um, influencers and interesting websites and other stats and data that are relevant to this LinkedIn outreach. I can put other terms in here. For example, one of my customers in the, is in the API management space and I can type in API management and it'll come back. But here we are. So you can see people visit these websites that are interested in LinkedIn outreach. There's the search for these keywords. Uh, here get a little bit of domain authority of the various websites that are being visited. But now it gets interesting. Down here you start getting the, the folks that are actually influencers. Uh, over here are individuals, so Ian Clary and Mandy McEvan and Jason Sibley, and over here are some websites that are active around this topic of LinkedIn outreach. So now I put Jason Sibley, say, into my Teamfluence. I put him, you know, him or her in, and I can add them as a, as a person to be tracked. And now I can, um, I know when he, you know, he does publishes anything and I can now either comment on it or I can forward it or I can simply use it as uh, a way to, you know, get my own content dialed in because what the thought leaderships talk about, I might not be necessarily on the leading, bleeding edge of things. And so that's a good way for me to stay in touch as well. So, uh, so that's uh, Spike Toro. And now we we'll come to the grand finale. Hopefully this will work. Um, We've talked a lot about um, highly targeting individuals. So get your ICP tight, you know, CROs that you know have a board meeting in two weeks coming up and that kind of thing. And you also want to uh, uh, target them with highly tuned messages. In theory, this sounds all great. The problem with that is you're going to run out of hours in the day because you end up, you know, in order to make your numbers, you want to make a million dollars. That means you have to connect with a thousand people and you have to, that means you have to study a thousand profiles. There's not enough hours in the day to do that. So we use a tool called Clay.run that uh, think of it, as I said earlier, as a, uh, a spreadsheet. So it has rows and columns and the rows essentially we use as individual leads. So each row is a lead. Sorry, it's, I'm activating this uh, thing. Each row is a lead, um, and then the columns are work steps. And each cell can make an API call. So I can go in and I can, um, you know, for example, uh, let me see if this actually works. Oh, it's hidden behind the go to meeting. Uh, so I, there's a little design. Oh, here you can see the window coming up. 
So there's a, I can actually put in the code that I wanted to be executing in this column. So the, from left to right, it's essentially a series of work steps. And I can say, go out and find me CROs. It goes out and comes back with CROs. Find me CROs that mention the word innovation in their profile. It goes out and comes back. And now start composing, you know, summarize their profile. So you can see here, it's giving me uh, a summary of the individual profiles. And then I say, okay, well, I'll create a, um, create a, uh, uh, an invitation and then customize the invitation or a thank you message. So we use this to basically, uh, and they use this, it's connected with 60 apps. So you can connect it with LinkedIn, Apollo, uh, but also with ChatGPT. So we usually at the left side of the spreadsheet, so to speak, we use it to find people and filter people to get down to all the CROs that are in innovation. And on the right hand side, we then say, okay, now summarize their profile, come up with a um, you know response that mentions these two things, and then it customizes a response to them. And so then in the rightmost column, I end up having you know here the thank you messages. I have a series of customized thank you messages. I take that and I export it into a CSV file where I have first name, last name, LinkedIn profile, and this customized message. I feed that into DuckSoup and I'd go 300, 500 customized messages to a particular demographic uh, that have the benefit of being tuned and targeted to their interests, but I don't have to go through and manually write uh, 500 messages. So I'm a little bit over, but this is basically uh, it. I think we've talked about uh, all of the three topics, the go-to-market strategy and how to make things measurable, how to make sure that you're targeting tight ICPs. And uh, we talked a little bit about kind of the, the basics of DuckSoup, which is obviously sending out invites. The next one is to run actually campaigns and get people engaged with people with First Connects and then I've taken you through an, a fairly robust implementation of sort of more of a more of a sophisticated nature on how to engage with people. Anyway, I'll call it quits here. Joe, do we have any questions or anything that I could answer? Sure do. Thank you very much. It was um, for me in particular, and judging by the questions as well, I think it's um, it's been really interesting to see how you use that tech stack. Um, because obviously a lot of our conversations are around how to use LinkedIn with DuckSoup and there might be an integration with Pipedrive or something, but to, to go through in this much detail with so many different bits of technology, I think it's been quite an eye-opener. So yes, we do have some questions. Um, I will start with Jake. He has said, Johannes, can you talk a little bit more about the process you go through to dial in your messaging on duck soup. And we've had another one as well from, I think Nadia, who was asking along similar lines, um, do you have a typical uh, first message that you send to people? Um, obviously you tailor it, you personalize it, but is there a, a kind of a bit of a strategy around those first yeah. few messages? Those are two great questions. Let me do the first, second one first. Uh, my own, uh, Invitational message is usually just I'm from the Silicon Valley and, and you know I'm networked and would love to connect. Something fairly innocuous like that. Um, it's not just the message though. Part of it is I've had to update my profile. I changed my picture. Obviously, I'm not 29 years old anymore, so I <laughs> had to sort of uh, uh, update my uh, brand persona, if you will, and still look mildly cool as one can as a baby boomer. And um, so there's a little more to getting people to connect with you than just uh, the message. Part of what also helps in my case is I'm quite active. I have a person, I started my own strategy initially. Now I have a person that's helping me that runs all my uh, LinkedIn postings and so forth. And so people know that I'm alive. And that helps when you try to make a connection. But the initial connection request is fairly innocuous. Uh, don't say things like, you know, it'll be of mutual benefit. You know, yeah, okay, I can see why it's of benefit to you, but why would it be the benefit to me? Just do something, hey, I'd love to connect. Or it sounds like you're interested in model trains. I'm interested in model trains. Let's connect. <laughs> um, and that's it. You know, don't sell too soon. Uh, which gets me to the to the other question, you know, how do you actually optimize it? 
uh, there we at this point of the game we have a pretty tight idea of who our buyers are and who our targets are and so we tend to know by category what they tend to tend to be interested in and I do use the tech stack we just walked through, you know, TeamFluence, uh, SparkToro, the LinkedIn ad library and so forth. So by the time we end up connecting with somebody, that's the first connect, we have a pretty good idea where he or she is coming from. And so then I tune a message to uh, theirs. Uh, we kind of bucket it in two buckets. There's the stuff that AMP sends out where we actually have the bulk responses but they are segmented so they might have right now for example they're running eight simultaneous campaigns to eight different personas but then there's also the high value ones where i say no no that one i want to go after personally and then i'll custom create a message to those okay and from the perspective of your you mentioned your 50 percent acceptance rate um do you use do you use all those tools in the in the beginning to to help you craft to to get to that acceptance rate? So you want to about uh, the tools. Do you use all of them all of the time, or do you pick and choose? Uh, there's a little bit of uh, marketing going on here. My AMP acceptance rate, where we're doing the automated programmatic outreach, is not quite as high. It's more around twenty five percent. What you're seeing there is my own personalized outreach over the years, and my average has been about 50%. The reason is most of those are customized messages. I may have met a person at an event, some such thing. So the real average is probably between those two, 25 and 50%, depending on which way you do. But yes, I we we eat our own dog food and we do practice what I preached earlier, which is let's really get specific. Talk about them. Don't talk about me. You know, nobody wants to know about me. They want to know about you. And so how do I tune to them and tune into them? And that's really the art in this whole thing. And we try to complement that with technology as much as possible so that you can still have a fairly high productivity doing that. That's great. Thank you. Um, we have two messages that have come in, again, along similar lines around your email campaign. So I'll read both of them. Uh, Chema has asked, you mentioned that you don't run many email campaigns anymore. But when have you found it useful to run a LinkedIn campaign alongside an email campaign? And then Sarji has asked, um, I understand Johannes relies mostly on LinkedIn for lead generation. Can you share the percentage of leads you get from LinkedIn compared to email? Uh, two great questions. Um, email used to be effective. Uh, email and, and the last two or three, four years, you know, ever since COVID, really, things have changed dramatically. Uh, everybody overused email, everybody overused LinkedIn, and then correspondingly, the recipients of these messages are starting to get numb. That means those technologies, just if you just blow out, you know, not very well thought out email messages or LinkedIn messages, they become less and less effective. Um, the email we now use is strictly as a follow on. If I've initiated a conversation, and the, the three lead sources that work for us are events, uh, LinkedIn and personal introductions. That's where usually the conversation starts. And then once it's progressed to a point where there's a little level of trust so that person is, purple is willing to, person is willing to A, recognize the email, B, open it, then we start switching over to email. We don't really use email anymore as a cold call outreach medium. It's just not effective. Uh, LinkedIn uh, in combination with DuckSoup, with targeted messages like the stuff we went through today. For the cold outreach is probably the most effective. And I see this, by the way, across all of our customers. We've had, uh, at this point, about 60 customers. And uh, they all um, have the same experience. So email is really more of a follow-on. Um, and then what was the other question? Sorry, now I got lost in my um, mind. Mm, 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 mm. So it was the percentage of leads that you get from LinkedIn oh. versus uh, that was from the, we measure everything on a first touch basis so first touch you know where do i get it because multi-touch doesn't really do me any good uh i want to know how do i get the conversation started and i would say it's about 50 50 50 percent of our leads come through linkedin and variety you know, but using all the approaches that we talked about and the other 50 percent come through referrals okay um thank you for that let's have a look we've got 
Robert has asked, can you please ask Johannes to show his Duck Soup messaging campaign if he can? How long is your typical campaign and how many messages do you send to people in a campaign? Oh, uh, I, I would. I'm a little worried about if I <laughs> yes, start experimenting. I, it took me an hour and a half to get all these windows staged and everything ready to go. So uh, I, the last thing I want to do is go in and the, you know the audience falls asleep because I'm navigating through. But we typically a campaign has a, somewhere between four and two and four messages. So there's the initial introductory message they accept, and then we send out anywhere between two and four messages. Uh, to follow up, but they're they're nested. So the answer to the f question one drives then what gets sent out in question two drives what gets sent out in question three and so forth. Uh, we also monitor them uh, extensively so that we don't send out blind campaigns because sometimes you get uh, people that execute these campaigns and after message number two, the person says, back off, I'm, I have enough, I'm not interested, and then out goes message three, out goes message four, and now you have an irate out there. And so we need to make sure that we do that. But it's between two and four, and it depends on the topic. Okay. And you use Turbo, don't you? Someone else has asked. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm more midstream and switching over to the cloud, but it's been so busy and cobbler's kids. Uh, so there's, there's also, no lack of blindness on my part. But, hmm? <laughs> I said also you've just had a big birthday and a nice big holiday. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just coming back from vacation. That's probably how I caught this cold on the airplane. So. Um. So Rick has said. So your targeted messages, then. So you send targeted messages and then you start the sales pitch. That was his question. He says at the moment mine is more. Here's some lovely content you might be interested in based on your profile. But he said it's not really working. So your your approach has been different, and you've obviously got different results as a result. Yeah, I, I would say the key difference is, and I it's sort of buried early on in the presentation somewhere. Don't sell. So we don't go and say, well, gee, uh, now it's my fourth LinkedIn message to you. Uh, can I send you my calendar link? I'd like to talk to you. Uh, I strictly use it to get them to be aware of us. And if the person is following me on LinkedIn, they will see the content that we're producing. And then we wait for the inbound. Uh, you know, the, the one thing we didn't talk about today, and that's probably the other half of the equation is how do you manage your inbound, uh, the traffic that comes into the website and into the various sign up links and so forth. Uh, so we really allow them to have control over whether or not they contact us. We don't necessarily go after them with a fly swatter. Okay. And um, I go back and forth on that one because if you have an investor breathing down your neck and that wants to see a certain amount of leads and certain amount of meetings, you're probably going to have to go and be a little more proactive, a little more pushy to try to get people to engage with you. In our case, uh, we've grown this thing organically and it's doing very well. Our average growth rate over the years has been about 35% a year, so I'm I'm happy with that. And uh, so we just much rather kind of take the high road and let them approach us. We put out the honey and let them engage with us. And then the ones that are actually interested are coming to us. I can see both sides of that argument, but we tend to be on the, you know, don't sell too hard. Uh, let them come to us side okay. of the fence. Um, Joey has asked, have you tried any AI tools to further streamline your workflow management? And if so. Yeah, uh, I mean, the. Uh, oh, Clean out front is, is <laughs> AI all the way. Uh, we use uh, what I didn't show. We use Perplexity and ChatGPT regularly for our messaging and, and compose messaging. And there's a couple of other tools. I think Spark Toro is AI-ish. Uh, there's a couple of other tools uh, that do that. Um, there AI really you can use in sort of three areas. One is obviously in analytics. Uh, and we, I didn't take you through the whole growth, growth modeling part, but when we calculate coefficients and conversion rates and things like that, AI tools can be helpful. They do need data, and that's the problem. Most startups don't have data. And then, of course, the other big use for AI tools is in messaging. And then the third use, and we also use it for that, is in actually coding. We use, we code our own app using AI tools. Yeah, and actually to add on to that. Uh, is uh, here at Duck Soup, the, the, we are working currently on a couple of different articles and some things and projects with as it pertains to AI and messaging. 
Um, so keep your ear close to us because we'll be uh, releasing some stuff also that'll be related to that. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I do still have a few um, other questions for you, if you're okay to if you're okay to stay on, Johanna. I'm good. Yeah. So very quickly, just for those who are um, short on time, if you wouldn't mind, Johannes, just jumping down to the next webinar slide, which I think might be the last one, and then we'll come back to the remaining questions. Okay, hang on. Which is this one? Thirty-two, no. number thirty-two. Thirty-two. Okay, here we go. So our next webinar uh, in two weeks' time will be with Scott. So he will be taking us through how to target events to drive sales appointments and grow your pipeline. Scott will be revealing his four-point strategy, won't you, Scott, <laughs> to secure your sales before, during, and after an event, including hacks to generate targeted lists of event attendees, messaging templates to drive engagement around the event how to leverage and benefit from a competitor's event content and proven approaches to secure and face-to-face -face appointments. So I am going to just put this link in the chat because I know a bunch of you quite like to register whilst you're on the previous week. So I've just put the, um, the link in there for the session in two weeks time, which will be on, um, on events and how to secure sales appointments around events. So thanks for those who have to dash off. Um, I've also put a link in there for a free trial. So I know almost half of you today were non-users of DuckSoup. Um, so I've put a free link in there for you to get your trial, uh, your two week free trial. So um, make sure you make use of that. Um, Right, apologies for the interlude. For those who still have questions, let me jump back to the questions. Thanks for, okay. thanks for accommodating the interlude, Johannes. <laughs> okay, no problem. Um, who do we have next? Let's have a look. We have Saji has come back again. Saji, you're on a, on a roll with all these questions. For the best okay. client deals, do you find it more effective to reach out directly to C-suite executives right from the start? Or do you start with leads below the line and work your way up? Oh my God, that's a huge philosophical debate. Um, yeah. I tend to side on the side of, you know, reach the executive directly. Uh, it does make it a little bit harder uh, the uh, because you have to get do that ICP work and the messaging work that we talked about in the beginning to really get dialed in. But uh, just because I'm able to get to an influencer, say an engineer that you, know, you want to get interested in your tool or, you know, his or her, assistant um, you still then have to convince the person to talk to you so you might as well get started with them that tends to be my approach and it also creates a little higher burden of proof in the sense that you really have to work on icp and messaging and what is he or she interested in versus they take a call because you know susie said so said so and uh so i tend to err on the side but i've seen both strategies implemented and some people swear by let's go through the influencers and then reach the executives. I tend to try to go direct. Part of that is also I'm kind of from the C-suite myself. And so to some extent, there is a sort of a peer thing that I can count on. Somebody else might not have that advantage. Yeah. And actually, if I could, if I can, I guess, reemphasize that, um, because it really does depend on like, who you are and being self-aware, right? Are you a uh, entry-level sales development representative then trying to reach out to a CEO or are you Johannes, you know, another co-founder reaching out to another co-founder or an executive to an executive or an engineer to an engineer? These are all things that will play a factor into like whether or not you may aim a little bit further down the funnel or aim a little bit further up to like an executive and also with the approach of messaging for sure. Right, agreed. But in all cases, you know, get it tuned, make it relevant. So don't have a can piece. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, what else do we have? Hang on one second. Let me remove that one. Um, Steve has said, thanks for the presentation. Can you confirm the Shareativity link as it seems to be shut down? I think you were having issues with that yesterday, actually. Yeah, it could be. Uh, I. I tested it and it worked, but uh, they may have issues. I don't know. That's why like, certainly the extension doesn't cooperate, which might mean that they haven't kept up the, the code. So I may, uh, yeah, 
try at your own risk. Uh, when it worked, it was great, <laughs> but I haven't been able to get it to work the last couple of days. Um, so Steve, it might be worth um, trying again a couple of times. Uh, right, but if it doesn't, they, they may have given up. I mean, it, it, I'm sure there's somebody else that could offer this or that offers the same services. You know, the whole idea is just, you know, I want to know what Scott Wright or Joe Henderson are doing out on the internet and Shativity kind of gave that to me. If not, we'll, we'll have to find a replacement tool because it's a useful piece of functionality. Yeah, it's interesting to see how you, how you use them all in conjunction. Um, Sarji has also asked, now this is more for Scott, I think. Well, can DuckSuit be integrated with any existing AI tool that can hyper-personalize each message we send out? I'm looking to enhance our outreach efforts and more personalized messaging. Now, we had um, another guest on fairly recently. Uh, did we? Uh, no, actually, I apologize. I'm pulling a case study together with someone called um, John Samuels, who has used ChatGPT uh, an awful lot to help him with his messaging. That case study should be coming out late July. Um, so that gives you a, an awful lot of insight, Saji, into how to use one particular AI tool um, with Duck Soup. But it's well, not that's, something that's what, that's, that's what Clay that Run does. So Clay Run scratches that itch, you know, because you can either load in a database or you can have it go out and find a database. So you get two, three, four hundred rows of individuals that you want to target, and then you create the work steps and the customized messages. And then if you output that into a CC file, you upload that into DuckSoup, you can send out the messages. Yeah, and to so yeah, and also to just touch on that in terms of like a natively integrated into DuckSoup, right? Um, right now they're, you know, the one that Johannes was just talking about, or some of these other ones can be, you know, the, uh, two part steps of getting a CSV and then being able to upload it or sort of that process. However, um, I also, uh, uh, Johannes and also to Joe, I've been working with a couple of people on integrating the, uh, um, Zapier with actual actionable steps. So based on whatever the chat GPT generates to then go ahead and, you know, send out, create, or whatever it may be um, via the native integration with Zapier that we have here at DuckSoup uh, and also with make.com. Um, if people are interested in that, I actually was able to build it out successfully. So if people are interested, feel free to contact me um, via LinkedIn or email. Sure. Um, perfect. Let's have a look what else we've got. Florian has asked, now I don't know if I've misunderstood this question, but I'm going to ask it anyway in case it makes sense for you, Johannes. How can mm -hmm. you nest information into a follow-up message? How do I do what? Sorry, one more time. How can you nest information into a follow-up message? I went back to her and asked her what nest, what she meant by nest. I wonder if it was a nest, Nesting is probably, if I interpret it correctly, it would say, you know, Scott, you as the head of sales at Duck Soup. So this phrase, you as the head of sales at Duck Soup, you know, we want to import. Uh, we typically do this uh, externally, again, either using a tool like Clear Run or sometimes we just use Google, uh, Google Spreadsheet, Google Sheets uh, to build these messages, nested messages. My guess is that's what uh, I think it's a lady uh, she meant. Uh, if not, ask the question again. Um, I think she may have left actually now. Um, hmm. if she didn't respond back. And I think, let's see, have we got any more? Uh, just to add one more thing to that, because um, with the nesting piece, just to make sure it covered, because I'm just thinking how somebody might also interpret that, is uh, so DuckSoup does support also links um, as well. Um, so if you put a link in there or whatnot, it will be able to share whatever that link is. And if it's on regular LinkedIn, it'll generate the thumbnail. If it's on Sales Navigator, it won't. But uh, you can nest sort of different links um, there, if you will, um, for the uh, DuckSoup to go ahead and support it as long as it's in that format. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, makes sense. Um, and then I think we've got one final question. How do I know how many leads I need to get to my desired revenue? Is this something that Promonio offers? Uh, that's smack dab in the middle of what Promonio does offer. Uh, you basically go through 
A simple version is uh, if you know you say I want to grow to a million, and I think 30% of my revenue is going to come from LinkedIn, and 30% from events, and 30% from referrals, and 10% are you know odds and ends. Then I can sort of break this down and say, okay, uh, if 30% come from LinkedIn, and if I I'm assuming that out of first connects, you know, one in ten is willing to give me a a, a demo, a, attend a demo, and you know, 50% of those convert. You can basically calculate backwards how many um, initial invites do I need to send out, and how many follow-ups do I need to send out in order to get to that 30% of a million goal. Our app does all that automatically, uh, but you know, people do this manually in an Excel spreadsheet or on a Google sheet uh, themselves. But that's basically the calculation. You work backwards. And that's why we only do first touch. You know, you want to know what's the initial, what gets the conversation going, not multi-touch. And uh, so then that's how you set these KPI targets that we talked about earlier, where we monitor on a weekly basis. Are we sending out 50 invites a week or whatever the target ends up being to make yeah. sure that you have a predictor for what's going to happen in September and October? And you're honest, do they need to have all that data collected already when interacting with you? Or is that something you can help them start from source? No, I mean, the, 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 the practical reality is that 95% or more of startups have no prior data and or are the data they have is not really useful, it's low quality. And this is the fundamental problem with these analytics tools that market, you know, AI and analytics and this and that. It's like, you know, five PhD data scientists from MIT will not get you useful insights if you don't have any data. 95% of startups don't have data. And so uh, you really have to calculate backwards and then track, you know, in order to make a million bucks, 30% is LinkedIn, this many, you know, demos, this many accepts this many engagements blah 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 you can create a little funnel and then therefore i need to send out you know four profiles 100 invites a week let's get the four profiles going let's get the 100 invites a week going and now i'm tracking those uh, and that's the whole process that we automate and then over time obviously you collect the data you need and then six months from now we can get the five phd science data scientists from mit and they have the data that they can do their thing on but between now and then, because there is no data, uh, you have to use a different approach. And that's what we do. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, let's have another look. We've just had another one. Um, is there a Promonio user level license? That is, uh, well, that's it actually. Is there a Promonio user level license? Uh, yeah, we have, uh, you can go on the website and download uh, a, a trial uh, tool. It's a little clunky because uh, the, the Google makes you go through a kind of a verification step. So it's better if they contact me personally and I can, you know, I can make something available for them. But yeah, we, we typically give people two week or a four week uh, free to use demo. It has abbreviated functionality so they don't get the full capability but enough to get a flavor and then uh, we can uh, we can follow up with a, a, a you know a full implementation if they want to okay so that message was from Airfan, so i think he'll be getting in touch with you yeah that sounds good i mean my my if, if you don't have it my yeah, email is johannes at primonio.com so okay perfect thank you um and Saji, you asked, um, this is the last question now, has there been, this is not for you, Johannes, has there been um, a webinar in the past about integrating pipe driving duck soup? Yes, yep. I think there has, and it was a while back from memory. Um, yep, there was, and I even put, a, I put a, a, maybe not the same responses, but yeah, I put a reply in there um, for, to, to a uh, webinar that we did uh, and then also we have uh, information on how to set that up uh, on our website as well uh, if you do need assistance or help just feel free to reach out to us uh, or to our support and we'll walk you through it as well perfect thank you very much well that's all the questions done um i think as we're it's quarter past quarter past now so it's, we've gone on it's been a good chat <laughs> yeah no thank you uh this is super exciting like i said in the beginning you know i've been an enthusiastic user of duck soup for a long time and 
this is this is quite an honor. So I appreciate you guys having me on. No, not at all. I think it's it's really useful for our users and, and for ourselves to understand how people use the tool and, and you know the different results that people get. And um and, you know, I think it's it's I just think it's really useful because it, it gives people different ideas of how they can do things and what they can do with it and what the tool is capable of. Um yeah. you know, different totally. and if I don't I don't know if anybody's in the California area, but Johannes also does throw a lot of uh, networking events for, for business professionals as well. So you can find out more information on his website, but also uh, on his LinkedIn too, so. But yeah, LinkedIn is probably best <laughs> using <laughs> There you go. All well, right. on that note, I'm just gonna remind a few people. So um, I popped into the chat the free uh, link for those of you who have joined who are not users at the moment. That will give you access to all the duck suit related features that Johannes has gone through today. Um, and you will get free reign across the duck suit platform for, um, for two weeks, absolutely free. Um, we also offer uh, technical sessions, booster sessions, one-to-one -one sessions. Um, some are free, some are paid for. Um, so if you go onto our services page um, or email info um, at ducks-soup.com, then you can hook up with the support team and work out what, what works for you on there. Um, as always, we love a review and we will um, gladly uh, send on a nice duck soup cap to those who um, put a review in with today's webinar date in there. Um, and as I said, I've also shared the link uh, in the chat function for the webinar that will be in two weeks time. Um, and I think all that's left for me then to say is thank you to Johannes. Thank you for um, for your content. Thank you for working with me for the last few weeks to pull all this together. Thanks, Scott, for joining today. Of course. See you, you on the next one. Thanks for having me. Okay. See you guys soon. Bye, Appreciate everybody. it. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.